Okay, breaking news. This caused me to stop making my other videos for now, and that is because there is a new infantry commander that goes by the name William Wallace. Every ROK YouTuber already beat me to the punch somehow, so hopefully you stick around in this video. But I'm gonna be honest, I did not like him at first because I thought he wasn't tanky enough, but within the time span of me cutting grass and thinking about his skills more and more, my attitude changed. Just keep in mind that for anything I say in this video, take it with a grain of salt because we won't know anything for certain until we actually use him in the open field. Anyways, let's get into it. So his first skill, Badass Bwaich, deals 2400 smite damage to a single target and that in itself hits hard due to it being such a high number. And not only that, it's also smite damage, which I'm sure everyone hates to hear me have to say it so many times, but there is no counter to it besides normal damage reduction stats, but those are rarely to come by effectively. Not only that, but on the same skill, he further deals 300 smite damage to up to 3 armies that are attacking him, totaling up to 900 for those that can't math. That part is kinda mid, because you don't really want him to get swarmed on the field, but if it's a rally then that's when it comes in handy, but not by a lot. Also do note that if you're doing like a 1v1, then that still applies to the target, causing your active skill to actually deal 2700 smite damage at that point, so that's cool. I just want to know if it triggers if someone's dealing counter attack damage to you, but we'll figure that out eventually. Moving on to his second skill, Scott Wahey. The guy offers 10% health, 30% attack, and 20% march speed. By no means is it a bad skill, but if Guan Yu gets a 10% relic buff, then they're at the same level on this skill, which don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing at all. It's still a very good skill in my opinion. I was just saying that it's about the same thing. And I know that some people will say that 10% health is not a lot. It's not, I get that. But let's just wait and see what the other next skills have to offer. The third skill, Lion of the North, offers a 10% normal damage reduction. See, he does get a little bit more tanky again. And not only that, but whenever smite damage is being dealt above 1000, so any active skill with smite damage essentially, then there is an 80% chance that it's going to do 40% more damage, which is crazy. To me, it kinda doesn't matter which commander gets that buff, whether it's gonna be Wallace, Liu Che, or Gorgo, because they're all great for it, especially Liu Che since he does do that big boy AoE damage, and then there's a cooldown of 10 seconds for it. A lot of players might want Liu Che as a primary so that he can hit 5 targets with that buff, but even with that damage increase to his AoE, I would still put Wallace as a primary because he does have that smite talent tree, which we'll talk about later. But back to that damage increase, don't even trip about which commander gets that buff, just leave it be and whoever gets it, gets it, you know? That's just my opinion at least. I get it though if you put Liu Che as a primary. Moving on to his fourth skill. When he's attacking troops, he gets a 10% normal damage increase and also a 10% increase to smite damage, which I don't know how to feel about that because it was originally supposed to be influenced by normal damage, not with stats that are smite damage increases. It seems like they're straying away from what their original intention was and making it function the same way as to how skill damage works currently. They can do whatever they want though, it is their game so we'll just see how that plays out. And then finally for his expertise, when he uses an active skill or gets hit with the slowed effect, so like if Liu Che or Ethelfled slows him down or whatever, then he will dispel that effect and give himself and two other allied marches a mighty shield of a thousand damage factor for two seconds, and then there's a 10 second cooldown for that. So that's pretty cool, but to have a cooldown for 10 seconds is kinda bleh, you know? But it is an expertise skill after all, and those are almost always kinda mid in my opinion. And either way, it would be overpowered anyways if that cooldown was to decrease, so there is a fine line to that expertise of being overpowered or weak. So for his skills, Big Dog Wallace hits like a truck on the open field. He has 20% march speed, 30% attack, he doesn't have a lot of tankiness, but it's better than nothing. He offers that small health buff, a normal damage reduction, and his expertise gives him that mighty shield, so he has three small methods of damage mitigation, and everything else is pretty good, I think. So obviously his best pair would be with Liu Che, because together they are tanky, faster than most other infantry marches, and hits harder than your strict parents. The next best pairing would be with Gorgo, I assume, and yeah, it's double single target damage, but together they have a lot of attack, normal damage and high smite damage in active skills. So they will be prickly for sure. And a side note, people out there currently use Belisarius with Huo Chupapi and players also used to use Henry Boudica and Sargon Tarek for the field. So ain't no shame on doing this double smite damage pairing, but I don't know, good luck to whoever tries that. The third pairing would be with Scipio, but I don't know. Don't take it too serious because it's better to just wait for the testing before we determine anything. And finally, we have the new talent tree for smite. 
It looks good I think. If number 1 on the picture, which is to the bitter end, doesn't restart after leaving combat, then it's worth it. If it does restart after leaving combat, then I wouldn't go for it unless you're doing a counter rally or something where your march won't die as fast and it can stay in the fight for a while. Number 2 is Thick Skin. This causes you to take 6% less skill damage, so you make sure to take that, don't you ever question it, okay? Number 3 is Fight or Flight. Whenever this guy's army deals smite damage, the victims of said smite damage lose 45 rage, so at that point, game over. Just pair him with Liu Che, who honestly thought that was a fair thing to do. Number 4 is Thunderous Smite. It already sounds scary. For that one, whenever you deal smite damage, there is a 30% chance to increase that damage by 10%, and keep in mind that there aren't any cooldowns for any of these things, at least it doesn't say that yet, so it progressively gets more and more racist the farther down the line you go. Honestly, Big Dog Wallace really needs to be paired with Liu Che. In my head, there's no way around it. You're gonna be missing out on so much potential if you pair him with someone else, but you do you. It's your account. Don't let the backpack tell you what to do. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is he worth it? I'm sure I already know the answer to that. In my head, cavalry players were already talking too much smack because they knew they were overpowered for the longest time, and Lilith said no more. Nuh uh. The disturbance in the force was far too great, and they probably felt like they had to make these changes, but who knows. I'm still sticking with my range march, and there's no turning back. That's it for the video. Later.